Hi, I'm Charlie, and this is Cooking with Milwaukee Community Leaders. Cooking with Milwaukee Community Leaders is available both in podcast form, wherever you get great podcasts, and on video on our YouTube channel, Cooking Secrets for Men. So I'd like to introduce my guest today, it's Laura Gutierrez. Laura, thanks for coming. Thanks for having great me, Charlie. You. Great to see you. It's uh, uh, Laura is the uh, CEO of the, Uni of the United Community Center, which we will call UCC because I just flubbed it right there from the beginning, and that's what everybody in town calls it anyway. Um, and so UCC was recently named um, Large Nonprofit Organization of the Year. Mm -hmm. Congratulations. Thank you. And you're also on many notable lists, um, including Top 100 Power Brokers in Milwaukee. It's a great list to be on. Um, you know, you're you're one of the the people that are trying to affect change here in the mm -hmm. in the city. So we do appreciate it. But we'll get to UCC in a little bit. But I want to talk about your your upbringing, uh, your early years. So you were born in Milwaukee. Yes. South Side, I'm assuming. Correct. You're born on the South Side. Um, and so talk about your your formative years, your growing up years, and how that helped uh, give you the foundation for the next phase of your career. Yeah, thank you, Charlie. First of all, thank you for having me. I'm super excited to cook and chat with you. Um, yeah, so my formative years, born and raised here in Milwaukee, South Side, probably about three blocks away from the United Community Center. Nice. Um, so, you know, my parents came from Mexico to the U.S. Uh, to find that American dream. And so I think my formative upbringing years really was um, hard work, balancing the spiritual life and you know when you have two parents um, who come from another country seeking a better life there is no such thing as the word no or no excuses right. and so um, also growing up with four wonderful siblings in uh -huh. a small house um, boys and girls uh, three girls one boy okay really he didn't teaches feel picked you on did he all the time he still does <laughs> <laughs> we're all like mama hens all right. um, and so I think that teaches you a little bit also to be resilient um, and you are constantly growing up where Spanish is your first language mm -hmm. you know you're you're you grow up a little quicker uh, just because you're helping your parents navigate a new system when you're able to do that whether it's um, you know, how do you communicate with doctors? How do you find resources? Sure. So I think that really helped along with just having wonderful support from our parish that was St. Patrick's, mm -hmm. um, where I was married, um, to the UCC. You know, as a child, I remember my mom going to the UCC to take uh, English classes to try to learn English. Uh -huh. and. In order for her to do that, she had to put us in program. So my brother did, you know, boxing at the UCC, um, and then my sisters and I did folkloric dancing. Um, and so UCC has been, I would say, in our DNA since we were kids. Sure. It was I work there. My older sister also worked there. Yeah. Um, so that's that's where I would say a really formative years really began. Right. Um, so. Uh, you went to college here in Milwaukee. You went to uh, Carroll College yes. in Waukesha, got your BS degree, mm -hmm. um, and then you got your master's from Marquette in leadership and policy. Yes. All right. So talk about where you were thinking your career would head after graduating. Great question, Charlie. I had no clue. So I knew I loved science, I knew I loved people, um, and so that's where I was pursuing. I think as first generation, our parents always want you to be a doctor or an attorney, right? So you're always looking at either one. Um, and since my parents did not have an education, they really didn't know how to um, guide us into what that path would look like or what the, those opportunities sure. were. What they did know and say is, you will be going to college and you will be doing something, right? So it, they always prioritize education. Um, we believe, and my parents strongly believe, that education is the pathway out of poverty. Um, and it is the only one thing that you can always walk away with and no one can take away from you. Sure. And so since they didn't have that opportunity in their country, they wanted to make sure we did. Um, so I had no clue what I wanted to do with, with that. I just knew I liked it. Mm -hmm. I loved doing the lab piece of it. Okay. Um, and quickly, as I started working at many companies, which you'd be familiar with, Aldrich Chemical, that right. is no longer here, Patrick Cudahy, 
Um, I enjoyed it, but felt it was very mundane, like there was something more to do. And uh, that is when my sister, who was a teacher, an elementary teacher, said, you know, we're, we're looking for teachers. At that time, she was working for Milwaukee Public Schools. Uh -huh. um, and she said, I think you'd be a great educator. And I'm like, absolutely not. You know, I'm thinking <laughs> little ones. And she said, no, middle school. You would be great. You were a little... Um, challenging as a, as a middle school child so why don't you uh they can't get away with anything and I'm like oh maybe that's a strength is what she's telling me um and so I applied at that time there was a program called Compton Fellows uh -huh. in which um it, they partnered with Milwaukee Public Schools a phenomenal program and it was for anybody who was um, in the business world who wanted to go into education and I applied um, I did not know about that prog program first, uh, let me take that back. Sure. I um, applied into Milwaukee Public Schools because at that point you could get an emergency license. And I will never forget Marta Lamelas, who was the one who interviewed me and said, I'm going to put you in a school. You go in there and do not disappoint. You do not tell anyone you do not have a license. And I'm like, okay, no pressure. <laughs> she said, we will work on that. So I had to be enrolled. Um, at, at, at UWM uh -huh. and um, my first job as a teacher was at Grand Avenue School on 23rd in Wisconsin. Sure. Uh, my principal was Ed Shapinsky who was also phenomenal and um, he put me in to teach uh, high school Spanish and science courses uh, and at that time I did not know his daughter was in my class. Ooh. So I think he did that purposefully. <laughs> Um, she went home and really just... Was she taking extra notes I during I think she uh, was, yeah. Um, but she did tell her dad uh, that she enjoyed my class and that I was a phenomenal teacher. Good. And then he wanted me to, make, to be chair. And that's where I had to call Martha and say, Martha, I cannot be chair. What do we do? And she's like, I'll call Ed. And Ed Shapinsky was really the one who said, you need to be in this program. You're one of the best teachers I have, and I can't believe you're not certified. Um, and so quickly from there, it just started growing. Um, at that point, I was already married with two children, mm -hmm. um, and our house in Milwaukee was very small, and uh, we decided then to um, move out of the city, which then led me to um, find a job at the United Community Center. Mm -hmm. I had no clue that they had already acquired Bruce Guadalupe Community School because I had graduated from that school when it was downtown at MSOE okay. uh, with the sisters. And so uh, when I applied and uh, they called me for an interview, my boss at 15, Dora Acosta, was one of the people who was interviewing me. Um, when I walked in, because I had a married name and she had a married name, we had no idea when we called one another right. that, you know, I had worked for her. Sure. Um, so when I walked in, it kind of became, an, it would became a, let's get to know each other once again. And she right. said, you know, you were responsible at 15. Uh, you'll be great as a teacher. You're hired. <laughs> well, you did, so you, you did, um, you were an educator kind of yeah. at UCC and St. Anthony's among other places. Yeah. So, um, Talk about, you You started to talk about the beginning of your journey, but talk about that um, that path and how it eventually led you to where we are today. I mean, there were some steps in between, but that those times that you spent as an educator of um, children in various locations is certainly uh, fundamental to you know, who you are. Yeah, um, you know, I... I think it was just seeing and being able to push um, kids who look like me and saying, look, I don't want to hear the excuses. My parents didn't know English either. And I still was able to be successful, right? Sure. It's how do we use resources? Um, and, and I also, I attribute that to a lot of people that surrounded me that basically just pushed you into, you know, they see things in you that you probably, because you're younger or into your... <laughs> Uh, what you do on a daily basis, that you don't see the leadership qualities that they're seeing so much in you that you're developing uh, because you're not afraid to take risks. Um, and I think when I just had, uh, you know, bosses who would say, hey, I think you're doing this, or if I would come to them with an idea, they would say, okay, if you're going to implement it and take charge, go ahead and, and do that. And so 
I think that was really formative and I knew that if I could make a difference and talk to the students about my own journey, my own challenges, that maybe that would be able to help them see like, okay, she did it, mm -hmm. I can do it too, and you know, maybe these excuses aren't, she's not gonna buy those excuses and feel sorry for me. Sure. Um, so, given your, your background, in 2017 you were um, appointed as the Secretary of the Department of Safety and Professional Services yeah. for the state of uh, Wisconsin in Madison. Um, so, first, tell us what that is. So I'm not familiar specifically with that division of the bureaucracy. And then, what it was like to go from teaching to working in a large state government bureaucracy? Yeah, that, that's a great question. So, um, first of all, I was shocked. To, to, to be the least, you know, at that time I was at St. Anthony and I was the um, Vice President of Academic Affairs overseeing the K-12 system mm -hmm. um, and seeing a lot of teachers and administrators under me. Um, and then when I got this crazy call, I thought the same thing of um, what does the governor want me to do? Um, at that point I had never really worked um, intimately with the governor. He, he used to come uh, to UCC and he, he read. Uh, with students in third grade, uh -huh. uh, never wanted any publicity, uh, but because I was in charge of curriculum at that point, I actually got to tell the governor what to do because he was at our house at UCC. Right. Um, and so that was my only interaction with him. A great man, you know, I would, I would tell him things and, and make sure that he correlated his journey with our students. Um, and so the Department of, of Safety and Professional Services is, is, I would call it the baby agency. Okay. It is a $100 million agency, so one of the smallest, but it is a compliance agency, Charlie. So uh, my job really, or my role there, was really to oversee um, and support everything that has to do with licensing, for the exception of educators. Okay. So electricians, to doctors, uh -huh. to tattoo artists, to um, hairstylists. Hey, all of it, okay. um, as well as um, building structures. Really? So state fair, overseeing, making sure that that's working well. Uh -huh. If a building is going up, overseeing permits. It had five um, offices throughout the state of, of Wisconsin. Um, and so I got to travel and see our beautiful state. Um, and it truly was a privilege, even when I think back to, here's a person, you know, if you ask my parents to them, they're like, this is crazy. You know, the governor chose you out of anybody in, in Wisconsin, immigrants coming here. Right. Um, just really shows you the opportunities that one can have if you're open to it um, and, and you do good work. Sure. Just like you, Charlie, I had no idea right. that the department existed and really learned how complex it really is. I mean, if you want to know about a dentist, and if he or she has had any violations, you go onto that site, you put in that dentist, that doctor's name, the nurse's name, um, it'll all come up, oh. uh, which is very interesting. And I'm like, why are we not communicating this? So I really took it upon myself to really let um, the constituents know what it is that agency does, sure. how we're here to better serve you, and then what feedback do you have for us to make it better because really you're working for the people. Absolutely. So um, 2019, yeah. you came home, so yeah. to speak. You were, became the CEO of um, the UCC, kind of a welcome back Cotter. Are you old enough to know welcome back Cotter? Yes. Okay, so it's yes. kind of a welcome back Cotter, <laughs> uh, but you're, you're not the principal, uh, you're not the teacher, you're the principal, or the, you know, I forget the principal's name on welcome back Cotter. But it's the same type of thing. It's yeah. the place you grew up, you were born near then, grew up there, uh, worked there, and now you're overseeing it. So uh, talk a little bit about the mission of UCC and some of the great work that's being done in the community. Yeah, so I would say our vision at UCC is to have an empowering and thriving Hispanic community where all reach their full potential, whether you're six weeks or 106. And um, we do that by providing a wide breadth of comprehensive programming um, in social services like cultural arts, neighborhood development, um, health, and human services. And really, Charlie, I believe we are there to transform the lives 
of all of our community members. Um, you know, the, the UCC really is a pillar on the south side of Milwaukee. Yeah. Um, yeah. And it really does transform lives. I mean, including mine. You know, yeah. when I was growing up, it, it was known as the spot. It did not have um, Isn't the that amazing... a bar on the east side? <laughs> the, the spot? It's now called the original, what was called the spot, the red spot or the red dot. Or... Well, I, yeah, well, the UCC was there first, so they That's must it. have okay. taken that, that name. <laughs> um, but it, it just really shows that the, the agency grew uh -huh. as the community grew. And the services were born to try to meet the needs of the community at that time and point. And if you look at all of the programs, education is really the thing that weaves all of our programs together. Because whether you're there to get an education, um, you know, academic education, we're there. If you're there to get educated on how to purchase your first home, that is what we do. We're not telling you what to do. We partner with you and say, look, this is where you are. Uh -huh. We meet you where you are and then help you either remove those barriers and show you the path so that whatever it is that your dream is, we are helping you there every step of the way. It's a great orchestra. Now you replaced Ricardo Diaz, right? I did. Yes, Ricardo's a great guy, yes. and uh, but good leadership follows good leadership. So yeah. congratulations on thank you on the work that's being done. So uh, tell us a little bit about your family. Uh, so my my family, my husband, I'm married to a great guy named George. We've been married for um, goodness probably 28 years. Uh -huh. Wow. Um, we have four children together, uh -huh. uh, two adult daughters, uh, uh, one who is a teacher uh, out in Florida. Okay. Uh, what this, part of Florida? Uh, Fort Myers. Okay. Um, our second oldest is in, in Charlotte. Mm -hmm. uh, she is a software engineer for Microsoft. Okay. And then our son uh, is a freshman at Florida Gulf Coast University. Oh, and then big time uh, basketball school. I know. I think that you know when Aaron Rodgers <laughs> tweeted about that. That's when all this interest was there. Um, and then our youngest is a senior currently uh, yeah. at Muskego High School. Okay, great. Um, so hopefully, pretty soon we'll be empty nesters and the house will be spotless. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, good luck with that. Yeah. Um, so um, we call this show uh, "Serious People with Serious Jobs yeah. Having a Little Fun." So we're having a little fun today. So um, I want to give you a little apron so you don't get Thank your you. uh, nice clothes, your UCC uh, yeah. shirt all dirty. So tell us, what are we preparing today? So, you know, today we are preparing um, a childhood favorite of mine. Um, my parents worked uh, first and um, third job. My, my mom was a first job uh, seamstress at JH Collectibles, which now are, are condos on, on the south side of Milwaukee. Um, and my dad worked third shift at Fister and Vogel. Uh -huh. And so they did that because A, they couldn't afford daycare and so they kind of alternated. Uh, so this is a childhood favorite of, of ours that was kind of easy to make. My dad was a lot of times the cook, um, even though my mom is a great cook as well. And so we are making fideo, sopa de fideo, which is wonderful for fall days, uh -huh. um, chili days, and then we usually pair that with either quesadilla or tacos of your choice. So today, to keep it easy and simple for anybody to do, right. it's a pretty easy recipe. We're looking forward to it. Um, so uh, we've done a little prep work. Give us a minute or two to uh, get set up, and uh, Laura put her apron on, and then we'll, we'll uh, show you how we put everything together. All right, so we're over here at the stove, so Laura, Take it away. Yes, so thank you. We are going to begin. First of all, we want to make sure your pot is a little warm before adding your olive oil. And I just add, oh gosh, about a teaspoon there. Um, and then what you're going to do, there is actually something called fideo, but for the sake of it, it's very easy. You can use any type of shell pasta. We are going to use angel hair pasta. And what you're going to do is grab it by bunches. And then you're simply just going to break into pieces. So I'm going to apologize for all of our Italians. You don't do this, but you just do it and break it into one inch, a little bit bigger. Killing me, Laura. Pieces. I apologize. I, and I love Italian food. Make a killing well, this is lasagna. This not an Italian meal, so this, it's okay. Correct. Thank you for the permission. <laughs> all right. So we've got the angel hair, our okay. fideo, yeah. uh, cut 
or chopped into the small one to two ounce uh, inch pieces. Yeah. And that'll be the base. So we were we were discussing before. This is similar to risotto, where you uh, toast the rice in oil or butter or the aerobatics, and it's we're do the similar thing with the um, with the pasta. That is correct. So once you put your fideo or your pasta in there, you just kind of mix until you can reach some type of browning um, in the fideo pieces. You might have to add a little bit more of um, olive oil or your oil of your choice. Um, and so you just do this for about four minutes. Um, you can add the heat up a little bit, but I like to keep it on low uh, just to make sure that you don't burn any of it. But it it's pretty easy. It's not rocket science, that's for sure. Hmm. Okay. All right, so we'll, uh, we'll come back in just more. a minute when the pasta has toasted and then we'll move on to the next step. So, all right, so we're, um, we've got the pasta. Yeah, we've um, got the pasta browned. As you can see, it doesn't all necessarily have to be 100% brown, but the majority is if you can look at that here, and it's on low, just like that, and that's what you want. And then you um, either, if you have a helper, you could have the helper continue to stir. That's me. And that's Charlie, so we're gonna let him do that. Mm -hmm. And then while Charlie is doing that, I am going to take my ingredients. Now, of course, this is all optional. I like to put cilantro in the blender, about mm -hmm. half a bunch there. I'd like to put onion in the blender as well to, to help flavor the soup. Mm -hmm. And then we are going to put our garlic cloves. We got about three or four in here. Okay. I add our tomato sauce, That's and that is about a 16 ounces right. of tomato sauce there. And then um, we are going to add to our blender about four cups of just plain water. And again, this is us making the broth. You can use chicken bouillon as well for your broth. Um, but I kind of like to make my own so that you can control the salt piece. So hopefully this is closed properly, Charlie. Hopefully. Hopefully. We'll see. We're gonna take a risk. And then we are just going to hit blend. And we're gonna blend that thoroughly. All right. We turn that off. Thank you, Charlie. And then you basically take your mix and you just pour it into your soup. And as you can see, you probably need a little bit more of the water as we do that. So as Charlie continues to mix, I added another cup. I think we needed about six. So I like to just get some more water okay. um, and take all of the flavors from our uh, blender here. So I think, Charlie, given the amount of pasta I put in there, I'm gonna probably go with eight cups okay. because as you know, the pasta will absorb some of this sure. water. And then what we're going to do once we add this pot, Charlie's gonna have a lot to eat. You can freeze it. Um, we are going to increase our heat to high. And the reason we're doing that is because we want to bring this to a boil. And we're going to bring this to a boil for two reasons. One, it's going to soften up our fideo, our angel hair pasta. And two, once it starts to boil, we are going to add our um, caldo de pollo seasoning. So it is basically your chicken bouillon um, powder, and you are going to season that to taste. So I like to use about one to two tablespoons, depending on um, how much we have here from a soup perspective. And we will just that's come a, that's, back after that's it That's looking boils. like lunch and dinner. It's going, you will have enough to freeze or to give away. So mm -hmm. all we need is for this to boil and then we will start with our seasoning. Great, all right, well, let us boil and we'll be back. At this point, once we've lowered our heat, we are going to take our chicken bouillon, about a teaspoon or a teaspoon and a half um, for taste, and you just add it in there, and then you are going to stir, and once we stir it, then you are going to taste for flavor. 
Again, I like to add, so this chicken bouillon, although it might be uh, two tablespoons, it might be three, depending on how much water you have here in the mixes. So you are going to just continue to add until you find it is the perfect mix. I can already tell that I may need a little bit more given how much we have made, but I will test. Usually you can grab a spoon, go back and forth. I will do this like my mother and grandmother used to do, which is you kind of blow so that you don't dirty the spoon and then you're brave and you put it in your hand and you taste and it needs more bouillon. All right. So we uh, it came to a boil, boiled for about five minutes or so, which allows the pasta to continue to cook. That is correct. And one of the reasons you use angel hair or fideo is because it cooks a lot quicker than uh, normal because it's so thin. Yes. And, um, and then we're tasting, and then we're going to turn it to simmer once we're we going to turn right? it. Yes, we are going to turn it to simmer um, once, just to let that chicken bouillon really get into that flavor. And um, once you do that, you can let it simmer for about two minutes, and then it is ready to be served. We're going to let it simmer because we're going to move on to the side dish, which again, you can make this and serve this with tacos or quesadillas. And today we are making quesadillas. Okay, all right, and that's oh, like the are. biggest tablespoon I've ever seen. And yes, <laughs> might be a couple. As I said, Charlie, we don't measure. This that's is right. the really tough piece of of cooking when your mom you, you do learn, it till it tastes good. It ta you do it until it tastes good. Yeah. Okay. I'm with you. All, all right, right, so we're gonna move over and start our quesadillas. Well, I am going to simmer this, and then just cover it until you are ready to serve. All right. So we will be back and in a bit. All right, so we've okay. covered it and it's we're... It's on low. Okay. There we go. And then we are gonna move over here to our comal. We are gonna put this on medium heat. And now, what is, the, what is the Mexican term for this? This is called a comal. And in English, we just say griddle. And in English, you say a round griddle. Right. Or, I know, I tried looking up the translation, it's just a comal. <laughs> you're going to let that warm when you do that um, again you can measure and do about um, a, less than a tablespoon I again do not measure I basically just take my butter almost like if you were going to make pancakes and I just like to melt my butter here like this um, do a little round circle that's going to cover the tortilla and this is a flour tortilla and then what you do is you simply grab your tortilla so it cooks at the same time you put it here again you want to have this on low to medium heat and then all you put the cheese obviously onto the tortilla okay. your flour tortilla so this is a southwestern bun you obviously use any cheese you want you can use any cheese pepper jack is one of my favorites you add the cheese you turn it around such as this you make sure that it's basically covering the entire surface of the flour tortilla. Now, at this point, you could basically just add another flour tortilla and put it on top. I like to add some toppings to my tortilla, or to my quesadilla, so all of these are extra toppings. I like to add a little bit of onion. Okay. Um, you can add mushrooms, you can add chicken. Um, I like a little tomatoes. Right, and mine it makes me feel, uh, yes, chopped tomatoes or sliced tomatoes. Charlie, thank you so much for doing all the prep work mm -hmm. um, on this. And then for a little extra spice and kick, I like to add sliced jalapenos onto my quesadilla. Almost like if you're making a pizza, but it's not. There you go. This is, again, you can add red crushed peppers. And then all you do, this is how easy it is, because I am from Wisconsin, born and raised, and love my cheese, I just add a little extra cheese to the top. Again, you can use mozzarella, you can use pepper jack, your choice of it. And then you simply take another flour tortilla, almost like a sandwich, and you add it there. I like to add a little bit of butter on the top just because you're going to flip, so just a little surface butter on top of that tortilla. And then you cover for about three minutes so that the quesadilla, not only the cheese melts, but it also browns the bottom to give you that crisp taste. Great. All right. So we've got uh, the quesadilla uh, under Slice. the cover. Yeah. 
and we've got our soup simmering kind of it's ready it's boiling so what we're going to do so that it's not burning hot we are just going to turn it off because that is ready to be served all right great all right so we'll be back uh i guess for the flip should we show the flip yes all right we'll show, we'll the, show flip. the flip all right we'll be back yes we're back i ready believe for the it's flip. ready we're ready for the flip all right that's kind of like a pancake and okay. you see this nice beautiful browned thing and it brown tor flour mm. tortilla and that's why we use the butter now we're just going to continue to close that up to give it a opportunity for the other side of the tortilla the flour tortilla to um, be crispy and browned and then we'll be ready to serve and cut all right all right so we're gonna uh, put these together then we'll get the soup ready and then Laura I think we have to we have to taste it I think we should taste it do you want to taste it oh yeah that's my breakfast, <laughs> yes. All right, thanks. Uh, we'll be right back. Yes. All right, here we are. So, Laura, tell yes. us what we got here. So, we have here our quesadillas, uh, plain cheese with extra toppings. They're, again, optional. You have your avocado mm -hmm. and your salsa, extra cilantro, and sour cream here. A little lime for the soup. A little lime. All right, so... Um, you're going to put some sour cream yes. in? Yes. So this is optional as well. As a kid, my mother oh. would cut bananas. Me, you want some water? Yes. He's going to get us something to drink. As a kid, my mom would slice bananas and add it um, to our soup. I've outgrown the bananas in my soup and now have just moved to sour cream. So again, I add one or two dollops. Feel free to do that yourself, Charlie, if you'd like to try it that way. Well, we have extra cilantro. <laughs> You Sorry. can add some cilantro onto your soup if you really like that. I think I'm going to put a little lime in. He's adding lime. I am opting not for the lime. And then for your wonderful quesadillas, look at this cheese. Mm -hmm. Love it. This is why we do extra. Again, you add a little bit of sour cream. If you're daring, you add a little bit of jalapeno. Put a little salsa here. And of course, who does not love your avocado? Voila. Grab a little avocado. All right. You mix in your, or stir mix, your soup so that the sour cream gets flavored in there. Look at that beauty, if you can take a look. It's a lovely, nice Beautiful. chemical mixture is what I like to call, going back to my science roots. <laughs> and then... You could also add, and I will do that just so Charlie doesn't have to finish these, I will add the extra jalapeno slices onto my soup wow. and enjoy. All so right, the way nothing you, left to do, but give it a taste. Yep, so give me your, ra your ratings, Charlie. Let me know what you think. Hopefully he'll forgive me for cutting mm. the this, pasta. It tastes like chicken soup without the chicken. <laughs> and you can add chicken yeah. if you'd want to. Um, but this is a quick, easy meal for all the working moms and dads. Um, kids love it because it's warm. And then the quesadilla. So the way we do it is you take a bite of your quesadilla and then you have some of the soup or vice versa. So enjoy it. I'm so glad you liked it. And thank you so much for having me here, Charlie. Well, thank and you for coming. Learning more about UCC and me. What's interesting is that even though it's a tomato-based soup, you, uh, the tomato mm -hmm. is there. But it's not overpowering. It's not a, you know, it's not of in front. The, no. The chicken flavor and the the pasta, or the fideo. The fideo. It's it's delicious. One of my favorites, especially in the fall, um, or if it's raining. Mm. I'm gonna give myself an A, Charlie. Perfectly done. Mm. Well, we had some Modelo beer, but. We opted to uh, to behave to not do it yet. <laughs> yeah. Well, before you take another bite, Laura. Yeah. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you for having me, Charlie. This was fun. It was a blast. Um, we always like to feature our community leaders and talk about the work that's being done in the city, try to make our city a better place. So. We do appreciate it. So, um, thanks for watching. Appreciate all the support. Please like and subscribe. And see you next time on Cooking with Milwaukee Community Leaders. Yes.
Thank you. And if anybody wants a tour of the UCC, feel free to give me a call. It would be my pleasure to show you the great work that we're doing in our community to make Milwaukee a better place. Thanks. Thanks for listening to another episode of Cooking with Milwaukee Community Leaders. Cooking with Milwaukee Community Leaders is brought to you by Cooking Secrets for Men, LLC, and was recorded in the Third Ward in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. We feature and profile community leaders who are trying to make Milwaukee a better place. The tagline is, serious people with serious jobs having a little fun. Our guests choose the recipes that we use on the show. All of our podcasts are available on iTunes, Spotify, and wherever you get great podcasts. The original YouTube video for this episode is available on our YouTube channel, Cooking Secrets for Men, all rights reserved. Thanks, and see you next time on Cooking with Milwaukee Community Leaders.